Oh, hey, glad you could make it. Uh, well, sort of. You kind of came during a time when Earth is most likely probably gonna be set on fire. Ah, oh, man. See what I mean? Uh, let me catch you up. Our planet has just been invaded by extraterrestrials. I'm talking infiltrative, destructive little parasites that can't survive without Earth's resources. This might be a strange time for a metaphor, but you can kind of think of Earth as a eukaryotic host cell and the ETs as characteristics of viruses. Ah, great. Looks like a fresh copy of Destroying Earth for Dummies. But this book is actually a pretty good representation of viral structure. All viruses are made up of a protective protein coat called a capsid that surrounds a core of genetic material, which is either DNA or RNA. That's why this alien's proteinaceous leather book cover is surrounding writing that looks suspiciously like genetic code. More on the genetic material of viruses in a bit. Some viruses have an additional wrapping of lipid bilayer around their capsids called an envelope that might look a little something like a layer of bubble wrap around a leather-bound book. If lipid bilayer sounds eerily familiar, like, say, the lipid bilayer found in eukaryotic cells, that's because viruses actually steal a bit of membrane from the ER or Golgi or plasma membrane just before or during exit from the host cell. Hence the property of Earth label on that bubble wrap. Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites, which means they must get inside a host cell to survive and carry forward the next generation of viruses. You see, viruses don't have the usual cellular machinery, like ribosomes, which explains why the aliens didn't bother to bring any machinery with them on the shiny but barren starship Obligato. But before you start feeling bad for them, they're perfectly happy to hijack the machinery of the host cells they infect. Once a virus gets inside a host cell, it uses host cell ribosomes to synthesize proteins needed for the next generation of viruses. Ah, a catapult? If... If all those copies of Destroying Earth for Dummies get launched into space, the aliens will be able to invade other planets in our galaxy. But, um, no need to panic just yet. That thing doesn't even look like it's on. Let this big pile of unearthly books remind you that hijacking the host cell machinery allows viruses to replicate and produce viral progeny. The new viruses, which are actually referred to as virions, are then released and go on to infect other cells. And our galaxy is doomed. But you know what? That's a problem for other host planets. We've got our own invasion to deal with. So with that, let's move on to see what makes these alien invaders tick. By that I mean, we're moving on to viral genomes. As we mentioned before, a virus's genetic material can be DNA or RNA. At Sketchy, anytime we're talking genomes and you see orange, think RNA. If we're talking DNA genomes, we'll use the color blue. That's why the print in this sacred alien tome is orange and blue. Wait, wait a minute. G Greg? <laughs> Why you helping dismantle humanity, buddy? Ugh, great. Now we've got a hostage situation on our hands. Anyway, let that positively shining sun remind you of positive sense RNA. Positive sense means that the viral genome can be directly translated to proteins by host cell ribosomes. You could even say that the viral genome takes the host cell ribosomes hostage. Which explains why Greg here is using the alien's sacred RNA book to make... What's he working on, anyway? Is that a... a chain of space grenades? Dangerous, but an oddly convenient analogy. This grenade chain represents the viral polyprotein chain that's translated from positive sense RNA. And these grenades are p, -p, p purple to remind you of p, -p, p proteins In fact, any time we depict an important viral protein in this chapter, it'll be the color purple. Sheesh, looks like this guy woke up on the wrong side of the hibernation pod. Maybe his mood is being influenced by this negatively cloud-covered moon? This moon with a minus-shaped cloud represents negative-sense viruses. Negative-sense viruses are a bit more complicated than their positive-sense counterparts because their genomes can't be directly translated by host cell ribosomes. Instead, negative-sense RNA serves as a template for synthesis of a complementary messenger RNA strand. Which is why this gloomy dude is using his RNA book as a template to make not an identical copy, but a complementary copy of those pages. Ooh, the phosphorescent glow of a space replicator. Let his futuristic writing utensil remind you of RNA replicase, also known as RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. RNA replicase is an essential enzyme carried by negative sense viruses. 
It's actually what makes the complementary mRNA strand using the genomic negative sense RNA as a template. Once the strand of mRNA is made, it can then be translated by host cell ribosomes to make viral proteins. That's why another human hostage is making a chain of space grenades, this time using the alien's complementary copy as instructions. Well, watching humans help destroy their own planet is a little depressing to watch. But since Misery loves company, it'd be comforting to look out into the ether and find out we're not the only planet being invaded. Ha! <laughs> yes! Planet Bacteria Obaga's taking a hit, too. But, uh, schadenfreude aside, this bacteria-esque planet is being invaded by a bacteriophage-looking spaceship to remind you of, uh, bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria and archaea specifically. Unlike other viruses, bacteriophages don't ever actually enter the host cell. Instead, they use a structure called a tail sheath to inject their genetic material into the host cell cytoplasm. Which explains why this spacecraft is injecting orange material inside this neighboring bacteria planet. Once the genetic material is inside the cell, it can be used to produce tons of bacteriophages, causing the host cell to burst, or it can be integrated into the host cell's DNA, allowing the bacteriophages genome to be copied along with the cell's own genome. We'll get into these two different cycles that bacteriophages use to infect host cells in the lytic and lysogenic cycles video. All right, well, this has all been stressful. I'm gonna go see if Barbados is more not on fire. But before I go, how about we assess the damage one last time? All viruses are made up of a protective proteinaceous capsid that surrounds a core of genetic material, either DNA or RNA. Some viruses have an outer phospholipid bilayer around their capsids called an envelope. Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites because they lack their own cellular machinery, so they hijack the machinery of host cells to replicate and produce viral progeny. Then we moved on to viral genomes, which can be made of DNA or RNA. RNA viruses can be either positive sense, meaning their genomes can be directly translated by host cell ribosomes, or they can be negative sense, which means their genomes must be transcribed into mRNA by viral RNA replicase, and the mRNA strand is then translated by host cell ribosomes. Last, bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria and archaea, and they use their tail sheaths to inject their genetic material into the cytoplasm of host cells. All right, well, I'm gonna go see about unbrainwashing Greg. Looks like he's already 80% of the way to full-blown Stockholm Syndrome. Later. <laughs>